see and hear you. It's quite groovy, isn't it? Like, <laughs> we are live. Um, hello, and my name's Emma Last from Progressive Minds, and welcome to uh, my Inspiring the World Within Your Reach uh, series. Um, and uh, it's all about taking, talking about people going from stress to strong. And so my guest today is the very lovely Laura Greenwood. Um, Laura, would you like to introduce yourself and just explain a little bit about what you do? Yeah, I'm, my name's Laura Greenwood. I'm 52. I'm a mother of three, husband of one. <laughs> and <laughs> dog. I have three daughters, three free-range daughters. And um, I have my business is Your Lead Generation, and I, am, I help business owners embrace marketing to create a lead generation processes in their business. Is basically what I do in a nutshell. Yeah, I have a six-step process that we work through to get their web and their social and their direct marketing running for them and start building up a structure before we start doing any fancy stuff. Mm, very good. Okay. So, um, we'll, if we get started, so uh, please can you tell your story in relation to stress? Yeah, prior to this, I was, um, for 23 years, I um, grew and ran my husband's family hospitality business. And um, and we threw our, we got married and we, I don't, it was never in the marriage vows, but somehow we ended up running this business. <laughs> we threw our heart and soul into it like we would. We grew three children and we realized that actually it wasn't what we thought it was and the ownership we didn't have. And it was all very toxic. And over the last 10 years, it was fairly horrific, really. So the writing was on the wall, so we left before we were bulldozed out, really. So we took the yeah. chance, the choice to move. We left my husband's family home. He'd been grown, he'd grown up there since he was born there. And uh, we took the huge decision to close the business and to move out. And uh, so we did. And um, and that was a, a fairly stressful occasion with three children and um, a dog. <laughs> and um, closing that, it was quite, I mean, it was front papers, it was front pages of the paper stuff, you know, it was quite, a, it was a big thing. And, uh, you know, obviously moving away totally from his family that was totally unsupportive and had been very divisive towards us. It was really, really toxic. And I suppose yeah. my biggest, and there was all the stress involved with all that, but I suppose my biggest personal stress was trying to find it so that I wouldn't, uh, I had had been the, I'd done it for 23 years and trying not to get away from that, um, to, to, to work out how I wouldn't be bitter and you know you've got three yeah. children yeah. looking back at you out they're going oh, how are you going to deal with this that you know how are you going to deal with it yeah. and well, all of yeah. that, to show them that actually despite how bad anything is you you can make decisions and you can move on so they were a big they were big drivers for me and I never wanted to be an old bitter woman who yeah because about what I had put into that business because I put my heart into it and we yeah. had to yeah had to yeah accept. And to not, and we put a lot of money into it of our own money that we'd made and we'd reinvested and stuff. It really was, you know, it really was a tragedy for us personally. But you move on, and, and worse things have happened to people. And um, yeah. so I went back to my marketing roots. So I used to be the, the marketing manager at the Orbit Viking Centre before I got married, before yeah. I went into the family business. So I went back to my, I'd loved marketing. I really loved it. So I went back to marketing and I thought, right, who's going to be my client? And my client was going to be the person that. I was 10 years ago, which was a busy business owner and, and you know, who had who was really good at what they did, but they needed that marketing putting into place. And my biggest driver for that, the stress wise was, and I suppose getting to that point that I was doing that was, I'd always said, you know, when you're really, really busy and you think, I'm yeah. just going to leave and go and work at Tesco's. We've all said it, haven't we? So when we <laughs> left, when we finally handed the keys back, it was like going into Christmas, but God, what am I going to do? And I'd always worked. I've never not worked since I was very, yeah. very young. Yeah. And then, you know, since I was 12, I'd worked for my dad in the in his racehorse yard and stuff. So I'd always worked every Saturday and Sunday. So I went, I thought, this was my time to go and work at Tesco's, wasn't it? So I went to work at M&S for the Christmas period. So I just got a job. It was the best thing I did. It got me totally out of there. Everybody saw me. You know, I saw yeah. everybody in this I mean, yeah. M&S food hall for a month of Christmas. And um, and that was a massive thing. It said, I realised I was totally unemployable and I never wanted to work at Tesco's. <laughs> so they were the two things yeah. that... <laughs> <laughs> also, um, it made me get up again. You know, I was still getting up and I was going to work and I felt that was a real normal thing for me to do in front of my children. Yeah, yeah. And the biggest thing for me, so stress-wise, the biggest thing was finding that routine regardless, doesn't it? It's that routine in the yeah. act totally yeah. alone. And it's your own routine that's your own, no matter, yeah. regardless of what anything else happened in a day. 
I got yeah. up in the middle of winter. I got up and I walked the dog because I, I love running and stuff and swimming outside. But in winter, it's very difficult to do that. So I used to get up early because you, you know sleep was sleep sleeping wasn't easy. I'd get up really early and go and walk the dog for hours. I'd come in and mm -hmm. do some yoga. I'd have a shower. I'd have my breakfast. I'd be ready like I always was for when the kids yeah. were. You know what I mean? I got yeah. really up. yeah. That yeah. routine and grounding myself in that routine added a lot of personal development. Yeah. And realizing, learning that things were, it was about how my attitude to it. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I had no control of what other people were doing to me. So going through all that process of it was just, it was up to me how I reacted it was a huge yeah. thing for yeah. me yeah. to really let things go, Emma, I think. So, yeah. Um, all that about that and so all that personal development thing around that was was massive for me I, I, and I totally um I've read so many books I, I really walk the walk with it and as I say this sort of magic morning routine and I still have one now and I still feel better yeah. if I've done it do you know what I mean it just yeah. set me up for the day and um and and that was a big that was a big stress thing does that answer any have I, have I, have I, gone, yes. off, have I gone off track no that's lovely okay so thinking about that now um, and obviously you've gone kind of from stress to strong with that story. What um, what tends to trigger your stress now? You know, what do you need to kind of be aware of? I was a huge people pleaser, which is why I got in the scenario where I got, because I kept thinking, yeah. I was like, that opium, I suppose you're like, you, you know, you, we've all come across that, do you? I lived on herpium and I thought, oh, they'll all see that I've done the right thing in the end. Do you know what I mean? It was that, literally, yeah, that yeah. was what I thought would yeah. happen with the family, and it didn't. Um, so um, that big people-pleasing thing, stop yeah. being a people-pleasing, and I can feel myself. You know, when it's my first reaction, it's my almost my sort of wired-in reaction, and it's changing now because at least I now pause and make the decision and make a different one generally. But yeah. I do find that awkward because I still it hardwired, isn't it? These habits are yeah. really hard. Yeah, yeah. And and then um, and the other triggers are and that not being good enough. I always go to the I'm not good enough first of all, and that's mm. the people thing, isn't it? So that's that's that core the call that you face thing, isn't it? And that's my no, I'm not good enough and I don't deserve this sort of thing. That's I can feel when I feel those triggers coming on, I, I can feel that, and that's where I go yeah. to. Yeah. So it's exactly. like you it's like you're in a in a critic, isn't it? That, that yeah, sort that's of true. yeah. And I'm, yeah. And it takes yeah. me a while to get through it. And I have people now, I tell I've told I've shared that with people and people know that I'm like that. So I can go, God, I've gone bloody <laughs> I'm hanging myself yeah. again, or beating myself yeah. up again. And then I, yeah. I'm learning to move forward regardless, but I just wish I could do it a bit quicker. Yeah. But that's coming, isn't it? That'll come. It, it's coming. It will. Yeah. Okay. So, so how does stress show itself in you? Um, I get agitated with the kids <laughs> and I feel, yeah. you know, like suddenly any asset they have is suddenly a mountain, isn't it? It's like, oh, I can't deal with that now. And um, I get yeah. athletes, but you know, <laughs> I get really bad athletes. That's a strange one. I've not Which heard that one before. <laughs> I get what it is I get. And um, I do, I want to eat the rubbish, yeah, which is why whatever happens, I have this morning routine that starts me off back at zero, so I don't carry it on day to day, yeah, because I yeah. know, I can eat, you know, the white toast and honey is mine and cake, really. White toast and honey, probably. You know, and I'm tired. <laughs> and the other thing is um, probably procrastination, or is that a side issue? I get, I can start procrastinating and um, I can start feeling, telling myself I'm very tired. Yeah. That can yeah. be a thing for me. So whether I'm tired or not, I can think, oh, I'm too tired today. And, I, and that all those procrastinations are not, I can find every reason why not to, to, to do something. So I think probably procrastination, when I find myself just not being, just doing it, that's that's when I know yeah. that I'm, I'm I'm being triggered yeah. about something, yeah? But yeah. when I get really yeah. stressed, I'm really out of my comfort zone and I know I've got, to, I'm, I'm too far off the cliff to come back. I get athlete's foot. Oh. Bizarre, isn't it? I'm sure yeah, it is. really bizarre. Yeah. I know yeah. what people is this is the thing is it manifests itself in so many different ways doesn't it you know people get tight shoulders or you know right. or they get tingly legs or um you know heart palpitations or whatever it's it is just so many or you get hot flushes or rash or increased allergies all sorts of different things happen yeah so yeah but i haven't actually heard of athletes but, but athlete. before. <laughs> you're unique laura <laughs> It was always going to be different, whatever I had, wasn't it? it was never going to be okay, so 
so what's your one tip um, that you could share um, with whoever's listening today um, about you know what what has helped you the most? Um, uh, what's helped me the most? I built up. It's a built up a built up habits, really, Emma. Yeah. yeah. I would say our built up habits. So it's definitely exercising, uh, journaling's helped, uh, the gratitude yeah. things really help for me. And I tend to do those at the end of the day. But on a morning now, I tend to wake up and the first thing I do is try and meditate for like 30 minutes or 20 to 30 minutes. And that really helps because it just, whatever happens, even if, even if it doesn't seem to be a really great session for me, I've learned to just do it anyway. And um, it does help me start to be calm. And then I go out and do my exercise. Like at the moment, I'm running and swimming. and um, and then I'm back and I'm showered and stuff. And I just have that. Whatever happens, that's what I do every day. So however I've gone to bed the night before, <laughs> yeah, I have, I have to get up and I do that. And that's that's the routine I go through every morning. And it seems to suddenly, once I start doing one thing, and that, like they say, don't you make your bed, get up and do your things. Yeah. For me, that's what starts my day off really well. Because once I've once I've finished that and had my breakfast and had a shower and I'm ready to go, I've forgotten. I've moved. I'm ready for the work list then, aren't I? And that's for yeah. me. Yeah. Being really, really in. Sorry, I'm way, Being really um, present and, and and just doing that next thing. So yeah. the overwhelm is huge, isn't it? We can all just get so the overwhelm can just take us all over, and it really yeah. can with me. Yeah. So when I go back and I say, right, what have I got to do now? Right now, I'm going to do this meditation. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to get up and I'm going to put my blooming trainers on and I'm going to go out the door and take the dog and I'm going to run and swim and do what I do. I, I've got a lake a mile away and I go and swim in it. Which, so it's not so exotic as it might sound. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, um, and then I come back and I have my shower and stuff and, and it's just doing that one thing at a time so I don't let that overwhelm come in. Mm -hmm. and that's how I keep it at bay from it just eating me up going, oh, I'm not good enough to do this it's just right what's the next thing to do and really simple yeah. and sometimes like what you know when you're running sometimes it's running to the next lamp post isn't it it's almost like that right when I'm really really striding right and then I've got to make sure that I write a really clear list so I literally just do that next thing get embroiled with yeah. that do that next thing and, and that's how I do it I think Emma just to keep that focus but I think what's great about it because you're like pushing yourself to kind of do the next thing but what's great is that with your meditation you're pausing every day you know you're, yes. you're, you're pausing it's giving you that time to be in the moment to give your brain a rest so you're not thinking then, about all of that overwhelm yeah. that's going on it's giving it a pause a chance to just breathe deeply and you know and, and so that you can kind of take some of that control back yeah and the other thing that I do is um is is um cold water I, I do shower in cold water which I know is really bizarre I am really bizarre and they say <laughs> that, that, that that's almost like a meditation because it really not makes you more present to your body and gets you out of your head than being cold water so yeah. that whole thing the whole thing for me on the morning is to get me back to stopping that overwhelm because yeah. we all get it don't we yeah and that that's what yeah. i started off with and that's what i've continued with yeah so that's really there's, that's a, really, there's that's, a great there's a great book that i've read and i cannot for the life of me remember the name of it but it is all about that you know that morning routine and the importance like it's all about successful people in terms of and how that those first hours of the day have such an impact on and that morning routine um you know has have a, has a massive i'll have to go back because I, re I wrote a post about it so i can I'll, so um so that yes. i can yes, let you know what but book that was as soon as though you like reading no, that for me and it's not it's not i haven't i didn't wake up one monday morning and do six things i've i literally started building them in really yeah. like, have, like stack them up on top of each other and i know like sometimes if i don't go for a run I know I haven't been and I, and I don't feel right. So it's all about, for me, putting that little habit in. Because I, I love being free range and freewheeling and not having any yeah. structure. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it, that's what, and it's, it's the one thing that keeps my head calm rather than yeah. getting lost in that overwhelm of I'm not good enough yeah. and that, that yeah. inner critic. Because you're in a critic, yeah. by the time you're my age, has got fairly, you know, got quite a loud voice if you haven't learned <laughs> to manage it. So yeah. uh, that's yeah. really, really helped me, and it's really helped me move forward. And um, it's that's that would for me be the, be the stacking up the good habits, doing one thing at a time, and and keeping going like that. So that's that's what's yeah. happened for me. Brilliant. And Thank you. Even if, even if you get up two hours 
later just go and do it just go and do it or just do us pared down if you know if it's the weekend and you're going off do a little yeah. pared down thing like even half an hour and a, a walk around yeah. the block and a shower and whatever it is yeah. i still i do try and do that that's that that's my time and yeah, that, yeah. that's my thing yeah well through it's interesting because through lockdown one of the most important because at the beginning of lockdown people were talking about oh yeah brilliant we can work in our pajamas you know we don't have to get dressed as a you know that and I, that for me was, you know, I was like, no, uh, um, you yeah, know, you, you, do you, that. you need you do that, that routine. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely routine without a doubt. And even if yeah. I've got shorts on and my slippers, I'll have a shirt on or, you know, you've done your hair, haven't you? And you've got yeah. up, even if I'm on yeah. top of people on the phone and I've been seeing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that routine of getting up for work, even if you're only commuting three metres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is there anything else you'd like to add laura no is there any other questions did i answer all your questions let's go and see if we've got any comments through no not yet i don't think sometimes we're a bit slow coming through because we're streaming to more than one place um yeah. anyway thank you ever so much uh, for coming on and doing it i really appreciate it and um i hope this you know even if this helps just one person um, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Getting the cold um, shower. I'm not going to have a cold shower. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. I'm off. I'm just going for a cold shower. I'll see you later. <laughs> All right. Thanks All ever right. so much. Cheers. Bye. Bye. -bye.